good morning thank you for joining me i hope everybody's well today first of all apologies if i sound very snuffly i have hay fever and i'm quite taking antihistamines but you know you just get that snuffly dry eyed bunged up nose thing going on that's me at the moment um today we're talking about hrt i said a little while ago that um i'd started hrt and i've now been on it for three months and i wanted to make a video about my experience of it one of the things i'm asked to make a video about the most is menopause and i've never made a video about menopause because i literally had nothing to say about it at all um however i've got lots to say about hrt and i will cover menopause in that so you might want to make a cup of coffee i don't know how long it's going to be but i've got one and i'm going to wear my glasses because i have made notes today i wanted to make sure that i covered all the things that i wanted to cover and when i get going get off at a tangent and you know what it's like you know what it's like don't mention all the things i get to the end i think really wanted to say that in fact i've just filmed a video for my patreon in which one of the things i wanted to say i didn't say because i didn't make notes <laughs> and so it didn't get included always so annoying anyway should be okay with this because we've got notes so my experience i'm 53 for those who don't know 54 in august um and I had the menopause quite early, um, 48, 49-ish. It was all over by then, really. Um, I didn't really have any symptoms. Uh, I, my mother and grandmother also had early menopauses, early-ish, not massively early, the same as me. And I think that is, I didn't know that, but um, that was something that the GP said to me at some point, I can't remember when, um, or perhaps one of the nurses at the practice, that very often when you go through the menopause is the same as it's hereditary. That's the word I'm looking for. It can be hereditary. Um, not always, I guess, but that is a good indicator. So the fact that I had an early menopause, what they call an early menopause, wasn't of concern. I understand because it ran in the family so it was just something that happened um i was very lucky i didn't really have any symptoms my period slowed down and then eventually completely stopped um and yeah that that was really sorry that's my watch d dinging at me i should it doesn't have a um silent but <laughs> i have to do it from my phone which is in a completely different room so anyway that's um nothing to do with what we're talking about today um yeah no symptoms no, nothing difficult uh, i was really lucky i just found that i went through it it happened and i carried on so very lucky in that respect again very similar to my mother who didn't had said to me that she didn't really have any symptoms she just sort of went through it it was done that was it um i did at one point i can't remember when um i I think maybe I was around 50, um, so probably within a year of finishing the menopause, a year or so or 18 months of finishing the menopause, I did, I read a little bit about HRT and how it could be beneficial and I spoke to, a, I didn't make an appointment, I was, it was during a consultation with a GP who was male, make of that what you will, I don't know if that was relevant or not but worth mentioning, um, that I said uh, it was about something else but i said oh i've gone through the menopause and i've been reading about hrt and it seems it could be quite beneficial could you do you recommend that i should start taking it and um he sort of very much brushed it off and said that um oh it's only the only thing it's any good for is if you get um hot flushes do you get hot flushes and i said no i don't get hot flushes um, he said oh you don't need it then and that was that i felt very much not not um i i felt as though it was something that i didn't need from what he said i felt as though he didn't really think it was necessary um as a word that i'm looking for and i can't think what it is but it doesn't matter anyway that that's how i sort of felt about it it felt very minimized you know the the thing and it was only for if i had symptoms and i, I didn't have symptoms so it was fine um 
Anyway, fast forward to this year, 2022, and I found myself, just let me have a sip of coffee. This year, I mean, we've been through the mill, haven't we? As well. I found myself at the beginning of 2022 feeling like I had aged 10 years in the last two, notwithstanding COVID, because, you know, it's been a hell of a two years, hasn't it? We must be honest. Um, it, it's certainly um, not been the easiest, and that might be part of why I felt like I felt, but... I felt like my skin wasn't grey, I felt like my sleep was crap. Um, I, I've talked before about, I hate using the word anxiety because that, it's, I feel a very overused word and it is actually a medical condition. Um, I worry a lot, I, I find things going round and round in my head, I've talked about that before, but a lot of worries, a lot of anxious feelings around stuff. Um, my joints aren't great. Um, I didn't think my hair was brilliant. I found myself taking supplements for this and supplements for that and researching this and researching that. Honestly, the amount of pills I was taking on a daily basis, you'd have thought I was, you know, <laughs> some, some, it was ridiculous. It got ridiculous. Not to mention really expensive. I was taking magnesium um, for sleep, which wasn't shit. Then I started taking collagen, which again, if you research it, it, there's a particular type of collagen, which is better than any other type. And of course, it's more expensive. I was taking that. Um, I found myself adding more and more supplements to try and make myself feel, I don't know, just better to try and improve my general well-being, I guess. Um, and during this time as well, I had a bad back, which again, I've talked about on here. And I went back to my chiropractor who I originally went to um, in 2017 when I had, a, or might be 2015 actually, long time ago, but I had a bad back um, then. And she's a lovely lady. I get on very well with her. And we were talking about, I can't remember how it came up, but just, general life things I think um general well-being type stuff for women in our 50s same age as me and um, she said to me are you on HRT and I said no I'm not actually she said, you must get on it it's the best thing ever she said it's so good and she really gave it such a glowing report and made me start thinking about it again and in conjunction with the fact that I've been feeling like I'd aged so much and, it, you know, more than I should have done in over a two-year period and um, all these supplements that I was taking and things that I didn't feel were great and could be better, um, I thought more about HRT and I thought I'm going to go back and ask about it again. I did some research on the internet, as you do, and um, looked into it a bit and I thought, yeah, I, th I think it might be helpful to me. I I'd like to give it a try. So I made an appointment with the doctors. Of course, you can't go and actually see a doctor these days. Everything's on the tele telephone unless, you unless they then deem after the telephone conversation that they want to see you in person. Um, guessing that's how it's going to be forever. Do you think it's how it's going to be forever? I think it might be. Um, anyway, so I made an appointment with the GP and I specifically asked for a female GP this time. Um, I generally don't, there's a practice with several different GPs in it. I don't even know how many, but they seem to be constantly changing and they're all part-time. So they do, you know, different hours and different days and they, it's a constant conveyor belt of GPs. So you never seem to see the same one once. But I particularly did want to see a female one. I felt like this was going to be listened to more so than previously. I felt like a female would be more sympathetic, em empathetic rather than sympathetic towards the situation than a man. Uh, going purely by my own previous experience of the male GP and I realise that I am generalising that, just how I felt, just I preferred to talk to a woman about it. 
after my previous experience. So um, had quite a long chat with the GP. It was really informative. She um, wanted to know about my medical history because I didn't know me from previously. Um, we talked through that. We talked about my reasons for wanting to go on to HRT. I talked about a little bit of, about what I'd researched and she um, sort of corroborated the information that I'd had, which was useful. And um, she said that she would be happy to give me HRT. Um, she told me that you could have either pills or patches and I immediately wanted pills. I already take a blood pressure pill every day and an antihistamine most of the year and vitamin D and zinc for my immune system <laughs> and all of the other things that I was taking. Um, so I thought another pill to add into my daily regime that would be easier. Um, she then said that because I'd had, I had some contraindications with various other issues I can't even I would tell you but I can't even remember what they were now that indicated that patches would be a better option for me than the pills I think the pills could if you'd had a particular issue the pills could increase your likelihood to get some other issue but you know the type of thing um so she recommended the patches so I said I would try the patches and was I wasn't over keen on the patches I felt like they would be a pain if I'm honest however they're absolutely great. Um, I, I'm very happy with them, no problems at all. Um, I've been on them for three months now. I'm on the lowest dose. That's the um, ones that I'm on. Um, they come in a packet with a month's worth in. You change it twice a week. Um, I change mine on Mondays and Thursdays. Not that that's relevant. And you stick to the same days all the time. Um, need to change it tonight so I'll open that and just show you what they look like it's just a small square on plastic backing you take the plastic backing off and you stick it to yourself you have to stick it on below your waist um, not too near your boobs because of um, breast cancer type issues I guess um, so I tend to put them on the top of my buttock um, and I switch sides each time. The most annoying thing about them is that like a plaster, when you've had a plaster on for two days and you take it off and there's a sort of grubby sticky mark around the edge is that and it's really difficult to get off even scrubbing in the shower. I've discovered that the only way to get it off easily is with a little bit of nail polish remover on a cotton wool pad <laughs> run directly onto it. So that's my top tip. Um, the patches themselves, I tend, the first time I used one, I found it did peel off a little bit quicker than I would have liked it to. Um, to put it on an area that is not going to wrinkle up when you sit down too much because otherwise the patch will wrinkle up with it and sort of come away from your skin. But I just tend to warm it in between my palms for about a minute before I put it on just to get the stickiness um, super sticky and then after I put it on I just hold it on again with my hand for about 30 seconds to a minute and that seems to make them stay on really well and they stay on through baths and swimming and all of that stuff so it's pretty good really um right let's pop that over there so how do I feel now how has HRT made me feel has it made a difference so Firstly, I've cut out all the supplements. As I finished them, I haven't repurchased. The only ones I'm taking now are the vitamin and D and zinc, which I take for my immune system. And I do take turmeric. I've taken turmeric for years for my joints. Um, I have arthritis. So um, since I got diagnosed with that um, in my knee, I've been taking uh, turmeric. So those are the only things I'm taking now. So my purse is a lot happier for a start. Now, the most affected thing that I was found which was almost instantaneous from the first day I took these things the first thing I noticed was my sleep I have slept so well every single night every single night since day two of this it's been revelatory my sleep has gone back to how it was when i was young um i still get up in the night to go to the low <laughs> but i go straight back to sleep my sleep seems better quality i always used to say when i was in my 20s 
before, before I had William, because my sleep was disrupted for years after that, never, never was the same after having kids. I think a lot of us would say that. I always used to say that my optimum amount of sleep per night, um, if I didn't have an alarm go off or anything, would be nine hours. It was nine hours. That was my perfect amount of sleep. And I've gone back to sleeping nine hours a night. And it's, I cannot tell you how much, uh, how brilliant it is. Honestly, it's it's been amazing in terms of my sleep. This, if it was, if that was the only thing it did, it would have been so worth it. It's absolutely. I, I can't say enough good things about how different my sleep is and how instantaneous it was. Immediately after, you know, the day two after putting the patch on, um, just completely different. Now, whether this is related to that or not, I don't know, but I suspect in some way it possibly is. I had terrible, I've got, <laughs> I don't know how long that's been there, is the bit of the um, tap, the packet that I took off, bizarre. Um, anyway, um, I had quite bad night sweats, and bizarrely, I didn't, this happened after I'd finished the menopause, after my periods had been stopped for a while, and it came on gradually, and it was pretty bad. Um, I would wake up, be so hot. Never happened during the day. I never had the classic hot flushes at all, but the night sweats were two or three times a night, I would say. I would wake up flinging the covers off me because I was so, so hot. That has gr That's been more gradual, but that has stopped as well. And I'm guessing that's related to the sleep because obviously you're gonna wake up if you're super hot, aren't you, and throw the covers off. But that as well has 99.5% disappeared now completely, which again is absolutely brilliant. Other things have been, I would say, quality sleep affects everything, doesn't it? So. I definitely feel less worried about things. I don't have that churning worry about things that I had before, but that might be related as well to having better sleep rather than to the HRT. I don't know. Um, good sleep makes you feel so much better in yourself. And I generally feel calmer and I generally feel less mood swingy. Um, not that I have massive mood swings, but I would say I'm on more of an even keel now and generally happier and feeling better in myself. But again, I could just put that down to the sleep. Um, I don't know, but I just feel better generally. Does my brain feel clearer? Yes, it does. The brain fogginess. I didn't have really bad brain fogginess, but I wouldn't say. But I would say, again, my ability to concentrate and clarity of thought is probably better. Yeah, I feel like it is better. Again, that could just be related to getting the amount of sleep I need, the quality of my sleep improving. So I'm not saying this is a miracle for all of those things, but generally it's improved life massively i would say um the only thing i haven't noticed a big change in is my skin um i'm not happy with my skin at the moment particularly um i feel like my skin's got very old i would like to see more of a change perhaps that would be a longer term thing as far as continuation with this definitely going to continue it i think i have to have a review after can't remember if it's six months or 12 months but um three months into it now highly recommend very much it has made a difference to my life which was what i was looking for um do i feel that the aging process that i felt had gone on in the last two years has reversed not necessarily um but i do feel like the overall quality of my life has improved if only for the improvement in sleep definitely so um let me know in the comments or get the discussion going in the comments everybody's experiences of hrt i'd be very interested to know what your experiences are have you tried it have you not tried it is there a reason you don't want to try it if you haven't um have you been refused it have you been offered it and decided not to have it what are your experiences if you have had it um 
I only have a couple of friends who have had HRT, um, so I'd be interested in other people's experiences of it. So hope this was useful. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.